me finger. <laughs> well, my what rather long legs you have. <laughs> We're not delirious, everyone. Welcome back to Nerd Bible Podcast. Da 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 da. Um, why are you not doing anything that's probably current? Um, Connor's not here, and then I'm not here. So, right, boy. so fuck right, you. Bye, I'm leaving. See ya. See you all next week. He's also jumped out the window just now. I'm gonna... Connor, no, don't. You're gonna break your knees. <laughs> What the we finger now? Oh, well, Hashtag- at least that ain't cap. Remember, everyone remember the rules. So this is in preparation. Hi, I'm George. This is Connor. Welcome to Nerd Bob Podcast for the first time or for the, the next last. time. Or well, the last, yeah. This is it. This is cap. Cancel. This is it. We're knee capping cap. it off. Knee cap. We're knee capping it off. Yeah, yeah. Do, do you know what's going to happen? This will be when it starts getting more and more traction and then we're going to be the knee cap guys. <laughs> 200 odd weeks of this shit and now we're the knee cap guys. Now we're the knee cap guys. And the thing is, we're not even Irish. Yeah, yeah. I've not seen that, Kneecap. Either. Was it any good? It's not out yet, no. It was a secret screening? It was, but then since that screening... I've got shot in the knees. Every single time. Yeah, my knees have been sweating in anticipation. <laughs> <laughs> in anticipation. His knees get excited and squeaky. Um, so in this, we will be doing a two-part... So, so Connor's basically going to... Um, Idiot's Guide to Alien Franchise, because uh, I've only seen... I'm not the expert, but I'll, I'll take it. I've only seen Alien <clears> and Aliens... Connor will take us through every Alien film in preparation for Romulus. Yes. Um, some will probably be in more detail than others because... For sure. We'll probably for, just... When yeah. it gets to Alien vs. Predator, we're, we're just going to talk a load of shit probably and how it is. Oh, uh, video game. Go and play that instead. There you go. That's because it. I've not even seen, because not, I've not even seen both of those. You know, for those, we can read the wiki because we need to pad out the episode. <laughs> <laughs> but this will be a two-part, so we so the first mm. part might not end with Connor's usual... Um, finger my knees, go subscribe um, content. But or I'll break them. Yep, <laughs> finger my knees or I'll break them. <laughs> That's if you didn't like Romulus. Um, but as we know, mm. in preparation for Alien Romulus, which is out by the time this, this episode's already been out. out. Last mm. week it came out. Is it 16th? Yeah, 16th, yes. So last week's episode... Oh my god, it's amazing. We're recapping post that, and then when we re- reconvene, we'll have one of us, probably Ash. Connor, will have seen Alien Romulus. More than likely. Put your money on it, folks, now. Get us... Get us Bitcoining, come on. Make, yeah. make, make our us, shares go up. Make us Bitcoining. <laughs> but if you've seen Alien Romulus, Romanus, Roman, Alien Romanus, Romanless, send it, send us emails or hashtags on Twitter. Hashtag finger my knees. Hashtag I'm praying it's better than pray or just as good as pray. I like to pray. I love to pray. I like praying. Although We've I'm had a good religious. Predator film, so hopefully yes. we, we do a good Alien film. We've had a good Alien film, now we're good for a good Alien film. <laughs> so... Right, okay. Connor. Hello. Yes. We'll start at the Hi. beginning. 1979. Ripley. Rip, Fuck, rip, how long rip. have we been here? <laughs> We've fallen into a time rip. <laughs> That's Cap. Um, no, Ridley Scott. I don't think it was his first project, but it was early on in his illustrious career. I thought you said he was here. Come oh, on, look, he's Ridley. over there. Oh, I'll break your knees. <laughs> Hello, I'm, gonna, I'm Ridley Scott. I'm going to uh, finger your knees. I have no idea what I sound like, but oh, yes, I'm rather sophisticated and not. I know, I don't direct Alien anymore because I'm... I've I, I moved on, and I like old prehistoric gladiatorial men. <laughs> and I like old men now. Okay, <laughs> Jesus Christ! I say that's rather alien myself. You've, you've somehow made you somehow made Ridley Scott the reverse of a pedophile. Okay, Ridley Scott. Connor Scott. The thing is, it's one of the hottest days ever. We've uh, been doing. I know. Looking episodes. at Ridley Scott talking about kneecaps. Oh boy. We're doing three episodes at once. <laughs> We managed the D23 Borderlands chat. Yeah. We're in the deliriousness of... We no. just need to get this done before Connor goes on holiday. Before I die. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so tell me more about um, Ridley Scott, the kneecap paedophile man. Well, I think, this is, so I, think, I think this is before he had knees. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't grow knees until I was a young man. <laughs> Uh, it's like fucking would I lie to you oh yeah, oh yeah you pull on your ear when you're like well I didn't grow I, well my ears are flat but I didn't grow hands until I was 12 <laughs> no, so he didn't he, sorry the, the caps of these knees weren't around until Thelma and Louise um, <laughs> Thelma and Louise Thelma and on your knees no Thelma and Louise so Jesus. We're, we're recapping uh, every alien film Connor's going to take me through it so spoilers uh, if you've not seen any of these films but fuck it because you should have at least seen Alien and Aliens Aliens is better. Spoiler alert! Up, big up, James Cameron. It's a, better, it's a different genre. It's like Terminator. Yeah. Terminator Two is more of an action, whereas Terminator One is Ooh, horror. scary horror. And Terminator yeah. Three is just something. I'd rather I'd rather Terminator One than Alien One though. Ooh, um, that's a that's a debate. I get that. Mm. I get it. 
I've bearing in I mind like I've the, only seen like Terminator the One once. Isolation of the Alien franchise, though, Ooh. and so and so did so, or whatever so the company made Sony. Game, yeah. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> good. Good pun. Um. Yeah. But um, 1979, long, long, long time ago. Before Ridley Scott had niece. <laughs> when he was way, way young. Not quite a baby. He had he had progressed into he feet. He had straight legs. He had feet. He had feet. He had toes. <laughs> he just had straight legs. They had to sit like this. <laughs> he just had toes. He was like a Ken doll. <laughs> he just sit like this. God. We are fucked in the head. We honestly are. Sorry, we're, we're sick on. people. Second project. Based on a story by Dan O'Bannon and Roland Shushet. Shush. Yeah, shush. <laughs> yeah, essentially... <laughs> yeah, I look so uninterested. Um, yeah. Anyway, um, those. Are, yeah, look, it's on the Nostromo. Yeah, the SS Nostromo. Uh huh. Behind? No, after Millennium Falcon. I was gonna say it predates Star Wars, but that's a big fat load of bullshit, right yeah, there. Two years after. Two years it? afterwards. Um, but it's before we'd seen anything the Millennium Falcon could really do, because that will happen in nineteen. Before the Kessel Run. Yeah. Before the old Kettle Run. Before the famous <laughs> Solo a Star Wars Red Cup story, twenty eighteen yeah. Kessel Run. It's true. Yeah, before that, yeah. Um, it's a very red dwarfy ship, isn't it? The um, it is the SS kneecap. In- <laughs> intimate <laughs> SS kneecap, no, the Stromo kneecap. Yeah, um, qu- yeah, quite intimate. Um, limited in terms of filming. I like gr- um, I like grimy space. I, like I don't grime. like clean clinical white walls. Why everything's wiped down and no. hello, everything is perfect in this version of the future. I hate those. Except ones. at this point, I am human and I am not. Kind a- of cob- everything's yeah. lived in. Cobbled Fine. together. Yeah. Yeah. I like yeah. stuff like that. Like, you know, <coughs> but like Christopher Eccleston's TARDIS. It's pieced together because he's repaired it. Like, I like when something's lived in, not like, this is all brand Scavaged new. Scavaged and art, salvaged, you know, yeah. Apple store, Ow. Apple store fucking spaceship. Fine, yeah. yeah. Very good analysis. Um, yeah, essentially, crew of the Nostromo. One big leap for man, one small leap for alien kind. Essentially, one big mission for the good of science and Earth. Because it isn't really clear when this is if this is meant to be in the future or around the time of release. But essentially, the crew have fucked Earth years but ago and yeah, they're but, gone. Yeah, but they're so far light still, years out that yeah. it is sort of timeless. Not, not quite Mass Effect, like mass relays and intergalactic star travel. You know, shout out to any players that play Mass Effect. Yes. Um, but essentially... The Nostromo, the SS Nostromo, is returning to Earth with a seven-member crew in stasis. <gasps> I am definitely not reading the uh, synopsis right now. You can um, read the synopsis. No, no I, I am no. Just for... read that kneecap synopsis. <laughs> kneecap synopsis. Um, seven crew members returning to Earth: Captain Dallas, Executive Officer Kane, Warrant Officer Ripley, who may have a first name, but I won't disclose it now. <laughs> Navigate a land. My name's Sigourney Weaver. Hello, Sigourney Weaver. I'm Sigourney Ripley. Weaver. Sigourney Weaver Ripley. Navigator Lambert, Science Officer Ash, and Engineers Parker and Brett. And then the old computer, who, again, wasn't known as AI, was known as Mother. The AI computer Mother detects a transmission from a nearby moon nearby and awakens the crew. All right, I'm going to make this fair on you. I thought you were going to make a stare at me. You're going to have a staring contest at me whilst I'm reading. Let's, let's, look, as I hold your hands and look into your eyes. Okay. What now? (laughs) My love. Let's What's do it. Let's mother? do Alien 1 to 3. Yeah, what? Well, Resurrection, mm. Prometheus, Covenant. In the next one, slash 10 minutes time. Yeah, so we'll yeah. cut it so it's three films <clears> in each. Fine. Let's single handedly say, fuck Alien vs. Predator. Absolutely. Like Connor said, yeah. play the game instead. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Okay, sorry. Yeah, bitch. Um, no. Alien 1, they're going to Earth, all of the stuff behind, uh, all the cool stuff they did was off screen, and obviously before they had budget, so... And knees. And knees. <laughs> they all had to get special chairs <laughs> and sit like this. And knees. Well, I mean, they were lying down. They woke up from stasis pods at the, at the very beginning. Oh, so, so, so they, they, Their knees were unaffected. They were unaffected, yeah. Um, essentially, the AI computer known as a Mother, which is a really mm. quite weird fucked thing, really, because you're calling your computer it's named after... Thing. Yeah, it's a things. it's a fucky thing. Yeah. It's a fucky fuck. Your eye, your eyes say gucci gucci, but your eyes say fucky fucky. <laughs> Where His clothes is, say middle management. Yeah, yeah that's it. Say fucky fucky. Are you calling your wife? HR. Yeah. Is your wife working yeah. HR? <laughs> Underrated joke of that film. It's probably uh, now two billion dollars. For that joke alone. Not unlike Alien. That probably made a lot more. Um, yeah. In terms of, so like you say, obviously mm. you prefer aliens. This yes. is a- Alien and Aliens. So mm. they do the thing of, it's the same film <coughs> series, but different genre 
really. Completely. Mainly between the first and the second one, less so in the subsequent Because what on earth is Alien... I mean, I can't even remember. It's jumping ahead. Alien 3, I think I've only seen once. I remember so how it about was, it in this part, big yes, boy. It's fine. <laughs> Coming watch right up. Mr. Watch the Mr. Sunday movie <laughs> stuff and just say that we did it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Except on a Monday. Except on a Tuesday. Um, so I like yes. I like that it's you know these are culturally two very important films and quite different in vast. Yes, not just the because the of the people behind the main, scenes. You know, thing is um, you know the the alien, the xenomorphs mm-hmm. and the carryover of uh, Sigourney Weaver. Sure. Other than that, you know, you could change the characters completely and. You know, unmistakably think that these were two completely different, worlds. separate films and worlds. Mm. Yes, um, I love these. Sadly, like as a film buff, I have never outright owned these films, and that is shame on me. But it's also <clears> it's a film series that you know the reason you're telling me all this is because after Aliens, I've not watched any of them. <gasps> I watched Prometheus about oh. ten years ago. Fine. So after really, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Covenant. Everyone kept giving it bad reviews, including you. So I was like, oh, I just won't bother then. <laughs> I didn't mind confident, but I mean, this we'll is me. T- that. Yeah, yes. this is me telling you now. But who knows? Maybe I will flash back and be like, Ugh! "I do." You're an aliens guy. I'm an alien. I'm an alien guy. I'm fine. I like the. I like the. Sell alien to me. Well, from what you can remember. You're. Uh, I don't really remember it. That's why I'm getting you to do it. <laughs> okay. in, ter- in terms of like the crew <clears throat> and being picked off one by one, like. I'm very big into your base under siege story. It's why I like yeah, Patrick fine. Trout and the Doctor. 1960s Doctor Who. Yeah. 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 It's I like that kind of, the whole thing you know in space no one can hear you scream like I lo- like I love that it's it takes the thing of like oh this is a sci-fi story and it's just like oh it flips it on its head it's a horror in it's a slasher in space essentially it is a slasher yeah um it's why you know movies as recently as 2014's life tried to sort of like emulate that, that kind of atmosphere and tone yeah and it's so timeless and so good and as as you know as strange as Ridley Scott was before he had kneecaps <laughs> like I think that. He'd done a lot of good, you know, he'd done some bad, but he'd done a lot of good for the Alien franchise. And, like, to start it, I think he started it off on the best foot possible. For it's sure. Incredible. For like, sure. it's a small cast, but they're all incredible. You know, the chestburster scene is one of the, you know, most, most iconic, notorious scene, parodied, infamous scene in cinema history. Yeah. It's yeah. it's one of the many films you have to watch before you die. It's in the. Yeah, the, it's on that 101 it, list. Yeah. For sure. At least. Yeah. You know, it's so, it's so well done. I, you know, and for this kind of thing, if like you know, recapping for Rom- Romulus, I should have watched. But it's also mm. it's a film series that you've sort of <clears throat> had more of a you know a foray into than I have. Sure, like literally, yeah. like like, yes. I, like I love the first two. I think there's an argument that they're both ten out of ten films. Mm. But you know, yeah. that's maybe something for something later on. But it's also yeah. like then the diff because the production difficulties of three onwards and then Prometheus mm. and then you know like where do we go from here and then like oh um, fuck there's an alien film coming out but then you know we're hoping that like the X-Men films maybe we're getting into a point where we have more good ones than bad ones yeah and I think not to just to jump ahead whilst we're on that conversation I feel like there's more meh better to bad films than outright great ones I'd which is unfortunate these two are the only outright amazing ones yes damn straight three has its moments David Fincher. Paul McGann shaved head. Paul McGann shaved head. Yes, oh, we're yeah. getting ahead of ourselves. Sorry, aliens. Uh, <laughs> we're getting ahead of ourselves. <laughs> <Get> <laughs> <it>. <laughs> shaved head. Cap. Wait until I. Th- I have some facts on number three about um, Sigourney Weaver's head, so we can do. Oh, that do you? Oh. <laughs> she had no. He- she had no head. <laughs> oh God! Ridley Scott had no knees. <laughs> she had the knees. <laughs> she could have his head. She-, she took his head and it left the set. <laughs> God when was it. when was Ghostbusters? Eighty uh, four. Oh, so this was this was like our main sort of exposure to Sigourney Weaver because she became known yeah, as so, the sci-fi queen. Sure, because she this was seventy nine and Ghostbusters was afterwards, and then Aliens is eighty six. So Aliens yeah. is kind of like off of the Ghostbusters rack right, as yeah. well, and yeah. they kind of then like clung on to the fact of we got to have Sigourney in it. Oh, because look, she's from Aliens as well. Oh, yeah. yeah, and then it's like oh, but then you know <clears> she was just sick of being in them. And then yeah. the clone stuff and everything. Oh, bloody hell. The clone um, saga in live action. There you go. Not quite as tragic, though. She is good in this film. But she I, is very cool in this film. She's very much almost like the Sarah Connor-esque character of like, this person that's just has is forced into a situation where she has to adapt She isn't the protagonist. The movie makes her the protagonist. Yes. All of these characters could have been the lead. But if you didn't tell me who was the standout, oh, yeah, forget Sigourney Weaver. These are just names I'm reading from a sheet of paper and I had no idea. You could believe that any of them are main event characters until you know the plot and the script tells you that this is the one that you're going to be following 
if that makes sense. Like, because even Ash, um, Captain Dallas, you see a lot of Captain Dallas to begin with. Um, unlike Borderlands, you do get them all bonding and chatting and eating meals, and you get a sense of the bands are in camaraderie between yeah. the squad, and you get a sense that you know these have been these you know these have been people that have been traveling for you know with each other for a while, and you know you get on to you know, who they were before they became intergalactic spacemen and kneecappers. Um, <laughs> and kneecappers. Um, you know, you get a sense of camaraderie, which is something like 2K and Gearbox fucking failed to do. Um, but alas, AI computer mother awakens them very sort of symbolically as if they're being rebirthed out of their sort of status pods. And essentially, you know, they detect an anonymous signal from a nearby moon and it automatically awakens the crew and again because they're on a sci- they're on this sci-fi mission behalf- on behalf of Ridley Scott for Wayland yutani the evil sci-fi space corporation which isn't shoved down in the movie's throat but you Yay, get a sense of you get a sense that oh you know, what's going to go down is kind of because of these people and yeah we don't have the law on franchise yet but fuck it let's just shove these names and if you if you're keen eyed you can observe what's going to happen from a distance um Essentially, not to speed through it, but essentially, you know, there's a lot of banter, a lot of chatter in between the main characters, which is what, for me, my gripe with Alien against Aliens is, because Aliens is longer, it's two and a half hours, this is two hours, or just under two hours, yeah. but the movie for me doesn't begin until 45 minutes in, when they actually get off of the fucking ship. They get off of the very lived white Apple store before Apple was a thing, spaceship. Um... Until you get John Hurt opening the cocoon and you get the iconic fucking um, face hugger scene. And again, it isn't how, oh, he's on my mask, fuck, get off of me. It's the, it's the suspense of, oh, look, there's a little creature. Oh, look, it's wrapping its head around John Hurt. What the fuck's going on with John Hurt? Will he regenerate? Will he die? What's going on? But then, and <laughs> it, it's that sort of drama that then gets me into this movie. The, the first 40 minutes prior to the whole spaceship landing. It just it just doesn't do much for me compared to Aliens, yeah. Where there's like double the people, a lot of action. There's a lot more xenomorphs and uh, you know a lot more shit going on. But it, that one keeps me engaged. This one kind of doesn't. Yeah, I can. I can. See, I can see why. Yeah. For me, anyway. Um, but yeah, iconic face hugger scene. Um, you know, alien come out of the chest. Which again, if you've not seen Alien, it's been parodied. It's been fucking culturally significant. Yeah, it is. It's very culturally significant. Why are you finding so funny? <laughs> so just just the Sunday movies didn't come up, and it was just like it was on Instagram, and it's like his Halloween posts because he always like <laughs> the spookiest time of the year is tax season. But he's taking the Halloween stuff. Oh, I don't mean to alarm <coughs> anyone, but he's yet again the spookiest time of the year. And no, I'm not talking just about tax time. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> but there was one that he did that was last year, and obviously like it covers his kids' faces or whatever. And then just I went in the com- comments, it was like, James, are you talking about tax season? Please let me know ASAP. Because <laughs> <laughs> he's dressed as Mars Morales. Oh. oh. <laughs> anyway, Jesus. sorry, I'm gonna close that because that was making me laugh while you were talking about Alien. But um, no, I get I get your points with that in terms of the film. Like it is a bit sort of like it's even it's though it's slow. shorter, it's it's. Pacier, it's like, pacier. It's a bit like you know, you, you, but then it is you want to breathe it lifting. in, it's yeah. Building the world that we will then inhabit for a few more films. later on. Mm. So I don't, yeah, I don't begrudge it that because, especially where it go, where the series goes in terms of like, oh, we got it, it's got to be action heavy and like we've got to fight mm. the scene more. There's so got to be shit going on yeah. against the predators, but like you know, we're not but, but then did that like, happen? Like, yeah, that, is it that, even that, canon now? Is it even canon? It sort of was, and then it isn't. Yeah. So yeah. I don't know. What but no, like, I, I, cool, I like, like you say, the character beats and the moments. And the culmination of it is very sort of like... The fact that it's just one of them as well, that's the... The terrifying thing. Yeah. It's one little baby that comes out of John Hurt's chest that then basically fucks off because they realise, oh shit, we can't have a little baby alien. We need to get a better budget all of a sudden. Yeah. And then they get someone in a costume with a ridiculous mask in a vent and you get the like the iconic death of Captain Dallas. One where... of the most iconic villains in cinema, cinema history. Cinema history, of course. Yeah, the Xenomorph. Yeah. It's, it's terrifying. Yeah. I, I, mean, I mean, all due respect, I've got a lot of time for Alien. I would I would say it's near enough a 10 out of 10, but I'd say it's probably like a 9 if I had to... Uh, yeah, it's a 9, but then uh, with these first four films, the different cuts tell slightly different stories yes, and that is true. what's extending and what isn't. 
Alien One, there's a lot. There's a couple of scenes that have been minimal. Dialogue's been removed and sort of fine tuned. Mm-hmm. It's a minute shorter. The director's cut in 2003 is a minute shorter than the original theatrical cut. But Ridley has stated multiple times that the theatrical's better. And I, having but seen he's both, a director. How many <laughs> that's Kev. How many hmm? cuts are there on uh, Alien? Two. I think, as far as I'm aware, all of them have had two cuts. Like Alien One to Four, have all got two cuts. Because Alien Three is like a strange one. Because that's like a hybrid. A hybrid. Yeah, a hybrid cut. Hybrid yeah. Cut. From what I understand, completely different movie kind of cut. As close to as a Snyder thing could be. Yeah, because that movie went into production hell, which we will get into. So yeah, yeah. like I love Alien. It's a good start. It's something that you know, if we'd have never got a sequel to it, it would have just been a, like, hey, remember that great film in the seventies? Yeah, man, it was scary and it was in space. Everything's so on a goddamn desert nowadays. No one can hear you scream. No one can hear you scream. Whereas it's like, you know, we're going to find out if you can scream. Like, the weird tagline for, is it three? Where it's like, you know, basically oh. the aliens coming to Earth and it's like... Oh, it's coming to find you! Yeah, you're going to scream <laughs> like, you know, everyone can hear you scream in on Earth sort of thing. It's like one of oh, those okay, yeah, weird yeah. ones. It's like, uh, it doesn't work as well. But no. That's iconic. The egg, the hatching, like the whole start of this, you know, mythology. Fl- flamethrower at the end as well. Yep. Flamethrower, the final boss fight. It's creative. It's a creative it's in terms cool. of like because it's not high budget. This one, absolutely not. No, and even like as the budget gradually goes up, they still find clever ways to use it. You know, because obviously a lot of it at the time would have gone to the actors. The you know, ball at the time practical would have been cheaper than the VFX. VFX. Yeah, but then now we're in a point where it's more expensive to do something practically because oh. you know CGI is the cheap <coughs> alternative. But um, yep, yeah, I love Alien. I do love Aliens, Aliens, but you're going to tell me why you love it more than Alien. Well, more than one Xenomorph. Guns. A lot of guns. Xenomorph guns. <laughs> Xenomorph Kneecaps. guns. Kneecaps. Um, a cool, different colour palettes as well. Alien 1 is very dark, very, like, again, atmospheric, moody. He looks mm. moody. Yeah. Um, duller I'm, to the I'm eyes. imagining it in my mind, in my, in my Sherlock Mind Palace. <laughs> I don't know. Just what are you doing here, Benedict Cumberbatch? Visually dull. Duller. Yeah, it's, to- it's very sort of minimal tone, isn't it? Yeah. The first one. Yeah, but I get that's what makes a good atmospheric thriller horror, especially way back when, when you know, th- it was kind of still being discovered by these early filmmakers, yep. inspiring filmmakers. But fast forward to 1986, Alien Two, Psych Aliens with an S to make it plural, um, <laughs> with another director that no one's heard of. I mean. James Cameron. I mean, I don't. I, it sounds oh, like Jim, every other oh, James Jimmy I know. C. Oh, Jimmy yeah, C. Jimmy C. Yeah, it sounds like someone I used to go to school with. In fairness, but um, Jimmy C. Um, he only went on to make Terminator, Terminator Two, The Abyss, um, True Lies, as well as Avatar and the Never Ending fucking franchise. That's like thirty years too late. Um, and Titanic. So it's safe to say that this guy, he's a relatively newcomer at this point. He's yeah. no one's ever heard of him. Yeah. Um, I think what third. Well, project I don't think he was like full on like. Oh, he's definitely going to make a banger of a film, is it? It wasn't. Like oh no! At this point, it was Piranha Two, which I've, I can't comment on. Terminator One, which I love anyway, but I haven't. I've that one on sort of do a rewatch on. And in Aliens, yes, this is film number three in the James Cameron infamous filmography. Um, <clears throat> Sigourney Weaver, and going by the poster, a little girl, <gasps> a tiny child. Get away from her, hey, you bitch. bitch. Get away from her. One of the most bitch. iconic lines in c- cinema history. Um, <laughs> set in the far future, again, very vague with dates and star dates and coordinates. Um, it stars Sigourney Weaver as Alien, R- a- Alien? <laughs> Ellen Ripley, the sole survivor of an alien attack on her ship. When communications are lost with a human colony on the moon, where her crew first encountered the alien creatures, Ripley agrees to return to the site with a unit of colonial marines to investigate. Now I'm going to butcher these names, but so I apologise. Michael Bean, uh, Paul Reiser, Lance Henriksen, and Carrie Hen- Carrie Hen are featured in supporting roles. Um, and then it's going to go on about oh, despite the success of Alien, oh, it took loads of long time to su- to be made because of lawsuits. And Fox weren't enthusiast um, weren't enthusiast behind Alien One. They were like, nah, we're going to make films about sharks instead. Yeah. And other things, so they actually weren't bothered about a like a second film initially. Mm-hmm. Although relatively inexperienced, James Cameron was hired to write a story for Aliens in 1983 on the strength of his scripts for Terminator and Rambo: First Blood Part Two. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Not directed, but he did write the screenplay for Rambo Two. Wow. Um, 
an approximately 18.5 million budget for Aliens. Uh, September 1985 and concluded in 1986. Um, yeah, enough about the facts. I, the fact that I'm giving this a lot more information rather than Alien 1, you know, is a little bit biased right there. Um, but nonetheless, Alien, Alien, uh, Ellen Ripley has been in status for 57 years aboard an escape shuttle after destroying her ship from Alien 1. God, 57 years? Okay. But she hasn't aged... Well, she's aged seven years in reality between the films, but she hasn't aged a day like fine wine between Alien and Aliens. Um, you know, she was at her prime back then. Um, essentially, Wayland Yatani, the evil shady corporation, um, rescue her and essentially say to her, ha, you did a good job, but now... You know, life was good back on that Nostromo ship, but now you can be, <laughs> you can do better. Where she's got to go to a colony on LV426. Um, again, you, characters like Carter Burke, Co- uh, Colonial Marine Lieutenant Gorman, um, Blimin Bishop. Where, where, where are all these characters gone? Um, D- Hicks, Bishop, Hudson, Gorman, Frost, Apoon. You know, basically the squad. Ellen Ripley's not doing it herself this time. Sigourney Weaver isn't just being the face of the screen. She's got to share it with seven mostly hunky men with guns. Lots of guns. <laughs> um, but yeah. Um, uh, where are we? Uh, Dropship lose the exposition of service and find the battle. Yeah. Um, so essentially her and her hunky colonial marine squad essentially go to the... To the Expedition service of LV426, and again, there's two rabid live alien face huggers around. Um, but there's no bodies, there's death, destruction everywhere, and the only survivor is a little girl with blonde hair mm-hmm. who Ripley then names Newt. Not named after Scamander because this is way before Harry Potter and Fantastic Beast. Um, <clears throat> essentially, <laughs> Again, a surprise facehugger bursts out of another person's chest. I can't remember who, because it's been a while since I've seen it. And essentially, one alien goes rogue and turns bigger and, you know, we've got to kill this fucker again. Yeah. More or less. Um, But then, yeah, you get the cocky soldiers that are kind of like, no, we'll do things my way. I'm in charge and I know how to do it because I'm a sergeant. I've got the most XP on Call of Duty. I'll do this thing, you do this. Uh, we'll we'll do this stupid idiot thing and split up like most slasher movies are. And then, of course, one by one, they get fed like litter and and chicken chow mein. They <laughs> yeah, they all die one by one in most painful death. And you know, Ellen again, Sigourney Weaver herself turns out to be the last main character again. Except this time, she's got a little girl that she's got to look after. With this, though, you find out about her backstory. Again, she's got amnesia. So, you know, Newt, the girl, yeah. doesn't really know why. She's kind of been thrust upon this situation. Mm-hmm. What's going on with life and, you know, what happened to her mum and, your, mum and daddy? <laughs> um, but nonetheless, they died. If anyone can predict it, they, they all died. So she's all alone, all without no one to love. Except Sigourney Weaver, of course, because, damn it, she's a nice person. Um, but yeah, she's a badass. She kills the xenomorphs one after another, after another. But then, it, it, but the film doesn't just end with her killing the aliens and going home. She then, unlike the first one, where she's in the frame, you know, she basically kills the bitch with a flamethrower. She's now proto Terminator. She gets into like a almost robotic crane of a mech suit, and this time she basically kills the queen alien. Um, and it does the same thing as the first one. She basically chucks it out of an airlock, airlock, and you know they both live, and they go back to Earth. Mm-hmm. That's Aliens, the story, Mo- live action motion picture coming from 1986, and why it's so much better. <laughs> so why do you prefer? Well, so like, mm, yes, them two films head to head. Why does this one come out on top for you? Because there's more. No, there is. There's more. There's more people. There's more characters. Mm-hmm. There's, there's, less, ta- there's, there's time. Uh, no, but there's time between this squad and Commodore. Um Ripley is different because again, she's been through this shit before, but she isn't acting the same as she was from the first film. Um, maybe new, you know, having something to fight for at least initially, not on paper, but then as she goes in throughout the film and how much they do bond 
despite the fucking ridiculous situation they fu- they fussed themselves in. Um, I don't know. I just think the camaraderie between the characters is better. The kills are cooler. You know, Newt's a great idea to pair with someone who's so sort of disciplined and unemotionally attached at the beginning, like Ripley. I just think it all goes well together. And he does the typical bigger, badder, better thing of, you know, one alien ain't enough. We've got to have, like, three or four. And then, you know, they do the final boss fight of the fucking alien queen, who's basically a big fat bitch that just sits there. Yeah. But they make it interesting. They make it visually striking. Um, I just like the screens. Oh, the screens. I like the, the way it's filmed, the cinematography, the cooler colour temperature, to, again, to distinguish between which one you're watching. Um, the special effects as well were a bit more in your face compared to alien which is mostly practical um and i don't I, and again the world building you just get a sense of more stuff that's not xenomorphs yeah in this one for me anyway this one i did it's see in partly the down to the world building that <clears throat> the first one takes the time to do for sure yes i don't know, just i guess just the, the you know, again the thing i'm scrolling down but the themes as well the whole fucking family thing, the motherhood theme and the masculinity and feminine feminine femininity i can't even fucking say it mm-hmm. yeah um yeah whitfully is going through ptsd she's been in a war the first time around with one alien but now she's in a bigger dangerous more global war because she's got a colony they're on another planet you know there's more than one person at stake so i just again it's just bigger better better and you know just a cooler movie and there's a lot more going on and it's longer so i know that will probably turn a lot of people off but bigger badder is truly sometimes better for me anyway True, yeah. and that's no, why I aliens that. is better than the first one um that it yeah. is another film that could arguably be a 10 out of 10 um i think on a bad day this is a 9.5 I'd say. yeah I'd, yeah it's a, mm. it's a high nine possibly a 10 it is very well made and i like that it's a different director different genre yeah. Like you say, it um, encapsulates everything that we like about the first one, sort of does it a bit better and fine-tunes it a bit more, which I like with that kind of stuff. And that it... Um, yeah, like it is it is different, but the same, and sort of, you know, <coughs> like with all good sequels, they kind of take what works with the first one, do it a bit better, do it a bit um, sharper. Mm. And I, I like that it pushes... You know, as it goes on, it pushes Sigourney even more of like she's the star of this franchise now. Like, yeah, it's, it's she's her, the face. It's her film. Yeah. It. I'm just gonna turn that fan on while you uh, get started on Alien Cubed. <laughs> That's nice. Yes, Alien Cubed. So, 1986 to 1992. And that's very nice. I thought you were just <laughs> giving me a, a, a good cappy look. Yeah, no, seal of approval. Yeah, I like that look. Yes, yeah. I can feel. I can feel the fan. I can feel the alien now, this in the famously air tonight. Yes. Had a hell of a production, like oh. many different directors on it and off of it. David Fincher has gone on record saying that he, uh, no one, it's hates not my the, movie. No one hates this movie more than me. Yeah, like I really hate it um, mm. because there was also riots. I think in LA at some point he was like hoping that they would just burn the building down so that all copies of the film would be lost. Oh. Jesus. Like, there were so many, like, there's there's a much better Mr. Sunday Movies video that goes into it when they, on Caravan of Garbage, when they go into it in depth on that kind of stuff, and it's like, fucking hell, that's kind of shocking, really. But but, da- but David Fincher, in case you d- you're unfamiliar with who he is, the man who did Seven, Fight Club, um, Gone Girl, more recently, yep. um, Mank, the film that kind of went behind the scenes of Citizen Kane that had Gary Oldman in it for some reason, that was the most sort of vast and different one, but hey, it's in David Fincher's name. Um, what was his the Michael Fassbender killing assassination movie The Killer last year on Netflix which is kind of like a return to form because he really hadn't done anything since Gone Girl um, yeah Social Network Girl with a Dragon Tattoo David Lynch is a uh, David Finch is a sick director he does really really cool messed up adult thrillers but when you put Alien 3 to this name this this doesn't feel like any of his other movies at all this isn't none of his works it's nothing like Christopher Seven or Nolan Five Club. is cited as mm. a fan of this movie. Like he, he says, like you know, mm. you can definitely see like it's, it's <clears throat> David's work. Like you know, okay. For it to basically, the impression is for it to come out as good as it did with all the production troubles. Fine, okay. It's quite surprising. I have to do like a big Fincher fun, a Fincher binge, and maybe I can then see the isms. But again, on paper, I wouldn't put David Fincher with something akin to this. But again, I've not seen Alien Three for. You know, 
years, essentially. Because that's the thing about 81 and 2. They are infamous classic films that people can put on any time yeah. of the week, and they're notoriously great. Everything, well, mostly everything after them, ain't particularly great. And I, I mean, it's still, it's still got legs. It's still got kneecaps. Yep, just about. Somehow. Um... But nonetheless, Alien 3 and his troubled story were set immediately after the events of Aliens 2, apparently. Uh, Ripley and an alien organism are the only survivors of the colonial marine spaceship Sulaco, following an escape pod's crash on a planet housing a penal colony populated by violent male inmates. Basically, Space Prison, the movie. Um, Additional roles in this movie, played by Charles Dance, Brian Glover, Charles S. Dutton, Ralph Brown, Doctor Who himself, Paul McGann. Paul McGann. Paul McGann, Baldhead. Danny Webb, Lance Henriksen, Holt, Mc- Holt McConley, Peter. Po- oh, I'm going to butcher his Pete name. Pete There you go. So, uh, Steven Spielberg once said that he was the, the very <clears> the best nicest actor man the on the planet. At the time. Oh, did he? At the, at the time, yeah. Well, I thought he was the nicest man on the planet, but hey, hey. Um, R.I.P. Pete Postlethwaite. R.I.P. Died yeah. in 2002, I think. Damn. A year before the, the assembly cut was released. Ah. Damn and it. Damn. You never God, got to see it, Pete. God damn it. Um, he is a good actor, Pete Possibly. <clears throat> um, mm-hmm. Sorry, carry on. The rest of the cast and you. Yeah, no, essentially. Uh, again, Rogue Face Hugger goes wild amongst prison. <laughs> oh amongst God. a testosterone filled prison of cocky assholes and dodgy kneecaps. So much so that instead of the Hadian coming out of the guy's chest, it actually bursts out of someone Paul McGann's kneecap. That would have been a nice touch. <laughs> that would have been a very, very nice touch. Um, essentially, yeah, Ripley, Newt Hicks, and the damaged android bishop from the last movie are all in cryonic status, stasis again. That seems to be a theme amongst the three. Um, the, 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 this prison planet is actually based on Fiona. Uh, F- 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 I'm going to butcher it. Foyrena Fury 161, a foundry and maximum security correctional facility inhabited by male inmates with a genetic predisposition for antisocial behaviour. Um, the face hug. Oh, yeah, and the face hugger doesn't burst out of a human. No. It kills a dog. It burst out of a fucking doggy. It burst out of a dog, yeah, because then it was like part animal and they tried to put a dog in the costume and that. Didn't yeah. Work. Man, fucking doggy. I'm just glad it weren't a cat. Hashtag team cats. <laughs> um, Ripley's injured. They shave her head, but otherwise, you know, she's going to burn and... Oh, it's going to burn. It's going to burn. <laughs> Ripley, yeah, you're going to burn. I think there thing in her contract that, like, she got paid, like, $40,000 every time they would have to reshave her head. Oh, like, wow. In terms of, like, reshoots and stuff. So much so that they didn't want to spend that much money on it in the end that they developed the... um. The, the bald cap with the, the shaved head sort of looking Look. stuff that they, you know, is now more readily used in... <coughs> like, in um, Furiosa, um, mm. old, um... Uh, Anya. Anya Taylor-Joy Taylor Joy. had, like, a bald cap, like, shaved head one. So. Oh, so she actually didn't shave her head? No. Oh. Fair play. Fair play. I mean, fair play to either of them if they had their head shaves, but it is what it is. Game's the game. Um, essentially, because of Burns, because she's going to die... Anyway, they shave her head and she goes on a depressed, <laughs> depressive tantrum and Ripley ain't the same character as she was from 1 and 2. Mm-hmm. A she, lot of people don't are like, uh, and this is where we fall off. This is franchise. not it's the same. The yeah. Yeah, this is not the same energy, tonally, visually. Yeah, just it's just a lot of people moaning about in a testosterone guy-filled prison and you're following the main female character in a male-oriented environment and not much is going on. Until you get to the dog death. I mean, other than that, cool. Um, <laughs> cool, great. Cool dog death. Yeah, yeah doggy death. Um, same story. Alien goes rogue, bursts out of a dog. It grows bigger. Fee, fi, fo, fum. I smell the blood of English. In- well, I don't know if we're English or American or whatever nationality Space. you are. <laughs> Space human earthlings, and I'm going to eat your soul. Of course, it doesn't say none of this. The alien just goes... <laughs> Like a cat. Just goes me. Just goes me. Anyway, Ripley, badass she is. She kills him with a steering contest. She doesn't even get a weapon. She don't. She doesn't get a flamethrower. She doesn't turn into a Terminator robot this time. Mm-hmm. She, without trying to read too much information, how does she actually kill the alien this time? Um. So, she essentially. 
gets oh so she activates the fire sprinklers blowing blowing the alien apart from thermal shock I vaguely remember yeah because I've I've definitely seen some of this on acid film four at some point acid rain kills it but sprinkled um there are any entirely team arrives including commandos and the man who looks at the to call to bishop who says he's bishop's creator uh, he tries to persuade Whipley to undergo surgery to remove the alien queen embryo Oh, fine, yeah, so Ripley gets impregnated with the alien queen uh, DNA thing in her. She's an alien. Alien resurrection, spoiler alert, Mm -hmm. is her being a walking, talking alien queen. Well, also you you think. Um, But yes, she's somehow pregnant with the alien, or she gets stabbed and impregnated. Maybe it's the hair follicles that were shaving off. Yeah, this is the end of Fred. Jesus She's Christ. impregnated by the alien queen, and, you know, oh, that's a big plot, Fred. Oh, what are we going to do? Uh, and that's it for part one. And that's it, that's... Because uh, it ends with her dying, doesn't it? Yeah. Like, flowing up yes. into space. Well, there's... In terms of the cuts of this one... Yes. What are the... Because there's one that... Um, the assembly cut. It's the like... assembly cut that's not... <clears throat> some of it's not done by David Fincher, it's done by... No, the it's AD. like a really early work press cut of it. Um, that was released without Vinter's involvement, but it did get a warmer reception to the theatrical release anyway. But of course, there are fans and stands of the original cut of Alien 3, and you get the fan bases that prefer the original and the Assembly. But from what I've gathered, the Assembly is a much more extended revised version. There's more side plots, there's more things amongst the characters. It is essentially a longer movie. Yeah, it's more Alien 3, and whether or not you will sit with that is sort of up to you, really. Um... Again, in terms of home media-wise, Alien 1 and Alien 2 are on 4K. You can... I think the the main way this was established and discovered was through the Alien set in 2003, the DVD box set, the quadrilogy or whatever. But then again, if you want high-definition enthusiasts, you just get the 2010 Alien Anthology set, which has all four movies with both cuts, You know, whether it's you know, theatrical, directors, extended, special, assembly, whatever the other cuts are. Essentially, all four of the original movies have alternative cuts, and if you still need to collect them and own them in some shape or form, we'll just get the anthology. I'm not to say that Alien 3 and 4 won't be on 4K at some point, but th- th- considering Maybe Alien... Maybe of Romulus? The release of Nuff, I mean, Aliens came out recently, but that's because of Cameron remastering and James Cameron doing James Cameron things. It wasn't yeah. because of Alien. But Alien 1 came out back in like 2018 19, so that was like a relatively early 4K, whereas Aliens has only just got a release like this year, so it could get another 5 to 10 years till we get more restorations of either sequel. But in fairness, don't fucking do it, just leave it with the anthology so I can get the, the special features and the other cuts. Anyway, Alien 3, definitely not the best of the three. Um, <laughs> Compared to the others, would you say would you say this is the worst one or not the worst one? Oh no, it is definitively I the worst Alien film. Memory serves me right, and it's been a long, long time in AVP. I mean, I've not even finished AVP, but AVP was like two thousand four, well, and this was ninety two. Uh, first AVP. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're both mid two thousands. Yeah, Alien Three is ninety two, then Resurrection is ninety seven, and it was after Resurrection. Then you know, it was kind of on the pools and hiatus. Yeah, where do we go? Where do we take it from here? Kind of thing. Oh, let's do Aliens vs. Predator. And then, you know, that didn't really work. No. So if but, you had yes. to rate this one, what would you give it? <clears throat> I mean, I can't score it because it's been eons, pre-Covid and so on. So, say a five. I'll go middle of the road. Okay. That's so, not too bad. Nothing. And that's nothing. a good place to leave part one. Yeah. Ooh. Come back next week for the slash, final three slash main tomorrow. Alien films. No, we're not going to do Alien vs. Predator. <laughs> Absolutely not. But you know, <clears throat> you know where to grab us. No bubble contact at gmail.com. I paste it across all Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and all those things. But we'll see you next week. We continue.